So to, now we want to talk about um, what are the differences between emotions, thoughts, behaviors, and impact of behaviors. Even as adults, I have noticed that most of the time we, we mix them together. We think our thoughts are our emotions, our emotions or feelings are our thoughts, and then the behavior and the impact of behavior we mix together. So can we talk about that a little bit and why is it so important to, to distinguish between Absolutely. Them? So a thought process is all the words and vision and images that come in. So if it's not one word, it's like, you know, run on sentences that you have. Believe me, those are thoughts. And thoughts can become like formulas or like if this happens, that happens. They could become if-then formulas. They can turn into belief systems. The way that a thought process becomes a belief system is when you generalize it, right? So if I just say, I uh, like to open my hands is, is something that I like. It's my thought process. But if I say all human beings open their hands like that, now it's more like I generalize it and it becomes a belief system. So we form belief systems about ourselves and the world consistently. So this is the way you could kind of look at what the thought process is. Side by side, we have emotions. Emotions are felt in your body. They're expressions of the same images and thought process as a chemical form that shows up in your body and gets stored in your body if they're not released. If you want to check out what your emotions are, usually one word is enough, sad, angry, annoyed. And then emotions also becomes more sophisticated based on thought process. So original emotions that we're kind of born with are joy, anger, fear, sadness, and uh, you know, those are the ones that we really have. Then you know, they get all sophisticated based on the thought process. So, and then in the area of anger, then you have annoyance, then you have frustration, then you have anger, then you have rage, then you have hate, you know, like you can see the escalation of that and then how with any type of form of thought process, it gets um, kind of more sophisticated in different ages. Um, so if you wanted to recognize your uh, emotion, you check into your body and one word shows up for you and that's your emotion. Action um, are words, our body language, our strategic um, ways of doing things that we do, but in the form of the thought process, you will have action words in there. So if you haven't got up, but you're saying, I'm going to get up. It's an action, actually, because it's a thought process that is talking about your action. So those are your action or intentions about your action. So thought process is internal. Emotions are internal. Emotions are here. Thought processes are here. The thought processes are electrical pulses that show up. Feelings are more electromagnetic fields that show up. These are internal. Actions are these two become external. So it's your way of communication to the world. It's your action to the world. And impact is outside of you. Is whatever your thought process, your emotional and action created a result out there with another human being, with a situation. So if my intention, which is a thought process, and my emotion is aligned, like if I want love, but I'm angry, my love is not going to get expressed. But if I want attention and in a loving hug, and my, my uh, emotion is also love and joy and openness, then my action is aligned with this, which I'll come in with a smile and open and say, can I have a hug? And that becomes my action and then has an impact, which I'll go to someone and say, can I have a hug? I miss you. And they're like, of course. And they'll hug me or like, I can't right now, but hold on and love you. And, you know, so I'll get that uh, my intention, my thought process, my emotion, action aligned with what I want to get. But if something I want, I, does, I don't get, I can always come back and look at which one of these were not aligned. Mm -hmm. What part of me was thinking something, but feeling something else. And those two were giving mixed messages. And in my action, it didn't show up as that alignment to get what I want. So that's how we can regulate ourselves. Now, that doesn't mean that everything I want, I can create. I have to be really nice. 
But since I can't control the world, the only part that I can have an agency to shift and keep coming back is me. So as long as I can maneuver this space to be able to get what I want, then I can have higher probability of that. And if I don't get it, I'll come back and learn and come back and contain my emotion, either change the intention or have the intention, but create another kind of goal and result that I can get the same. Like, I, okay, I can't get a hug from you. I still want a hug. Now let me go who else that I can go because I really need a hug right now, right? So you'll shift the, you know, the zooming on this person, but then you'll shift and take the intention to another person. So this creates agency in knowing what is it that I want to do. And the distinction between them is, when something doesn't show up and they're not aligned, I can go back and assess on which one I need to change. So let's talk about students because students are going to have a lot of issues with this. Mm -hmm. um, let's say the example we used on the other video, a student comes in and they throw the backpack on the floor and they start acting out. And we are trying to figure out or help the student figure out is this their emotions, their thoughts? Uh, is the action aligned with what they uh, were thinking or feeling? And are they getting the result they want? Obviously, they are not getting the result they want because I don't think the result is I want my teacher to get upset with me. The result is I want attention, probably. So how can we do that? Can you explain on this situation um, what might, because we don't know, but what might be the thought? the emotion, and why do we behave the way we behave? So it could be a probability of I'm angry because I'm not getting what I need. And maybe I was upset with my mother because they didn't give me an attention. And I come in and I see the teacher doesn't give me an attention. So I think I'm going to make an entrance. I'm going to be loud because if I'm loud, I'm going to make, an, I'm going to get everybody to attend to, to me. So then the person comes in and tries to get the attention. And then the, the other, you know, uh, the other student doesn't look at him and the teacher is busy. So throws tries to be loud throws something and then watches to see what kind of reaction shows up well obviously that kind of a reaction will not be positive will be negative if he gets the attention he does partially get it you wanted attention now the conversation becomes does he did he really intend to get the quality of the attention he wanted so then as you pay attention you give him that attention oh you wanted my attention i'm here you threw this here and I'm here, but it seems like you're upset. So let's take this and go into a space where we could talk so I can actually give you a positive attention because the, the original reason was I wanted a, a positive mm -hmm. attention. So as you go sit with a child, then you go track back the, about what's going on, what's the feeling, where is it, what is it you wanted to create. And then when it says, I just, you know, I wanted you to see me, or I wanted to be able to get a hug, or you paying attention, or I wanted my, my uh, you know, student, the other student to pay attention to me. And that's where you check was, you know, you wanted attention. You got attention. Is this the type of attention you got? This is what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Would you prefer to get it another way? And then you said, how do you, and then you show them the action. Mm -hmm. So you check based on the impact, you based on the result, you go back and check, was the intention the same? Was the thought the same? Was the in, uh, emotion similar and aligned with it to their action? If it is, great. If it is even validate what parts of it you got, which you can still do, what parts of it you didn't get, which now we can change. What type of emo emotion would you like? what type of an attention do you want? That's a change of the thought process. I don't want negative attention. I want positive attention. What is a positive attention? So then they say, well, if the person looks at me, if they're smiling at me, if they're looking at me and liking me, that's what I want. Great. So that's a change of thought process, right? right. How are you going to get a positive attention? Like if you go something like, like this to someone or yell at them, do you think they're going to like you? No. So what kind of emotions would you have to have in order for somebody to like you? But, you know, and then what kind of behaviors with smiling, coming, what would you say if you want somebody to like you? So you're showing them exactly what kind of a thought process, what kind of an emotional process, what kind of a, a, a action will most probably get you what type of an impact and a result you want. 
So it gives you the opportunity to role model, change, and access each part so that they can be aligned together. Mm -hmm. What I noticed is when uh, children are very young, of course, they only have emotions. Mm -hmm. Then they start the thought process. Then they are nonverbal. It's but, but just to say all emotions have thoughts beside them. Okay, okay. great. So when they are nonverbal, they cannot really express or distinguish between the thought and the, the emotion. They right. can and, distinguish. And they're, they're very young. Those thought processes don't come in in the form of a word, but it comes in the form of a vision, pictorial vision. Later on, the, you're putting words into those pictorial vision, which they become the, but the thought process were there right. as a vision. Right. As they get, they grow older, when they are three or four, they are very clear in distinguishing between their thoughts and their emotions. My experience is when they get a little bit older, when life gets a little bit more complicated, then they start mixing the two. Then they start thinking their emotions are thoughts and their thoughts are emotions or vice versa. But when they are younger, when they are very clear on everything, they are just a bundle of uh, energy. They actually can distinguish between the two. But when they get to six, seven, eight year old, now when you're asking them, sometimes they can distinguish between the two. But when you're asking them, what are you thinking? They go, oh, I'm thinking I'm upset. No, you're not thinking you're upset, you're upset. Yeah. That's a feeling. Right. Now tell me what are you thinking? Right. And um, sometimes they can't tell you until you actually verbalize it for them and they start thinking or visualizing. Oh yes, that's what, I, I, what I'm thinking. And it's how we teach them. A lot of the books for children, unfortunately teaches them, I feel I want an ice cream. That's no, that's a, actually a thought and an action process. There's no feeling in there. There's a desire. Yes, you, you could always say, I want an ice cream because wanting is not a feeling, it's an action process. So you could really say, I want an ice cream and I feel joyous about having an ice cream. So I think part of it is also the language that we use that they learn. So they get yes. these confused because the way we put it in the language, we put the feeling at the uh, part of that. So even I statement, sometimes we're like, I wanna teach them I statement, right? But then the only thing that we do is put an I at the beginning of any sentence as if that's an I statement. It's like, I think you are a bully. Well, that wasn't that I statement. <laughs> I statement means my experience of something versus like putting you in a, in, a, in a corner of something. So it's important for us as teachers, as mentors, as counselors, uh, parents to know at first how to distinguish between these so that as we're role modeling this for them, mm -hmm. that they learn the distinctions and put it appropriately in the sentence structure. Why? Because that sentence structure is the action, because that is the actual communication that the child learns toward expressing what's going on inside to the world. Okay, coming back with other material. <laughs>